Time now for business news. Catherine Bennett joining us. Morning to you, Catherine. Good morning. Uh, beginning with the chief executive of global mining company Rio Tinto uh, stepping down after the company destroyed a sacred Aboriginal site in Australia. Yes, so Jean-Sébastien Jacques, the CEO of Rio Tinto, along with two other senior executives, is leaving the company by mutual agreement with the board. Rio Tinto blew up the Jukan Gorge rock shelters in May this year in order to expand an iron ore mine. The caves were 46,000 years old and sat on top of 8 million tonnes of high-grade iron ore, with an estimated value of 132 million Australian dollars. Initially, the company responded to public anger by deciding to strip the executives of their bonuses, worth millions of dollars. But that obviously wasn't enough, and the growing backlash from shareholders forced them to take further action. For more on this story, we can cross to Rochelle Harrison-Pless, our Australia correspondent. Rochelle, what has been the reaction in Australia, particularly from Indigenous communities? Well, the National Native Title Council uh, welcomed the news that Rio Tinto's top three executives were getting the boot, but said this was only the first step. Its chief executive, Jamie Lowe, said the laws need to be strengthened. And that's what the government is working towards at the moment. A review of the Aboriginal Heritage Act 1972 is currently underway. It's set to get rid of the contentious Section 18, uh, which allowed Rio Tinto to destroy the Duke and Gorge caves legally in the first place. And now the Act uh, currently excludes Aboriginal voices, uh, but the revised version will give Aboriginal groups a seat at the table. Uh, state leaders say there'll be greater cooperation between mining companies and the country's traditional owners and more inclusive measures that uh, would provide better protection for uh, these sacred sites in the future. Now, Rochelle, this isn't the first time that priceless Aboriginal heritage sites have been destroyed. That's right. Uh, advocates for Aboriginal heritage protection say so much has been lost over the years, either legally or illegally. And all of these losses, sadly, highlight the power imbalance between uh, the mining industry and the country's traditional owners. Uh, in this particular case with Rio Tinto, the cultural significance of the Duke and Gorge caves uh, shouldn't be underestimated. Uh, the site has been described by archaeologists as home to the dawning of of humanity. It dates back 46,000 years, making uh, uh, the 17,000-year-old Lascaux caves in the south of France look like modern art in comparison. Now, according to the state's Aboriginal Affairs Minister last year, of the $29 billion uh, made uh, by Rio Tinto, a whopping $22 billion uh, came out of the Pilbara region, which is where the caves are located. So it really just emphasises uh, the greater need uh, the, the need for this company to have a greater understanding of the community in which it generates most of its profits. Great. Thank you very much, Rochelle. Rochelle Harrison-Pless there. Moving now to Silicon Valley, where Google and Twitter are to clamp down on online misinformation about the upcoming US election. Twitter has announced that it is updating its content moderation rules. It will now remove tweets that contain false or misleading information about election rules and will add fact check warnings to tweets that contain un unverified information. Google, meanwhile, has said that incorrect information about election results would not show up in searches, even in the autocomplete function in the search bar. The Trump campaign has lashed out at the two companies, saying that big tech should not be the arbiter of truth. Now let's take a look at the markets. A muted open on European markets today after tense talks between the UK and the European Union. London's FTSE was just under the flat line, with the CAC 40 and Frankfurt's DAX dropping around a quarter of a percent. Stocks in Asia in positive territory, even after more losses in Wall Street overnight. The Nikkei, the Shanghai Composite and the Hang Seng Index rose over half a percent. Sol's Kospi just about tipped into positive territory before the closing bell. In Sydney, the Australian index S&P ASX 200 fell over three quarters of a percent after the Rio Tinto scandal. Shares for the company's Australian arm also fell 59 percent, while other mining companies also saw a related dip. 
Sudan has declared an economic state of emergency. The value of the Sudanese pound has plunged in recent weeks, making the price of basic goods rise by up to 100%. The country has the second highest rate of inflation in the world after Venezuela, at more than 143%. The government will be setting up special courts over the coming days to fight financial crime, from smuggling to black market trading. Singapore Airlines is going to cut 4,300 jobs, or 20% of its workforce, due to what it calls the debilitating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. These are the first job losses at the airline since the SARS outbreak in 2003. The airline is expected to be operating at less than 50% of capacity by the end of the year. The group said that while it had initially managed to resist job cuts, that soon became untenable. Because the airline doesn't have a domestic market, normally the first to recover, it has had to cut costs. And that wraps up the business from me. All right. Thank you very much, Catherine. Catherine Bennett from our business desk. Let's cross the other side of the set now. Speak to some